Hi folks, Florida Man here, releasing a video outside of my usual schedule, as I'm sure you notice. The reason is that recently, the main website I use for playing diplomacy, playdiplomacy.com, was attacked by hackers of some sort. I don't appreciate that, because Play Diplomacy is where I keep a lot of my diplomacy stuff. Literally, hundreds of records of my prior games are there. It wasn't just me inconvenienced, either. The whole site went down for a while so they could fix the issue. A lot of people were concerned, many had games disrupted, and some were quite critical of Play Diplomacy. They somewhat understandably complained that its security must be amateurish, that their games were being wrecked, and that their forum posts were being systematically replaced with random, profanity-laced strings of nonsense. Personally, I think many of these people already post random, profanity-laced strings of nonsense on the forum, and they're just looking for an excuse for their mistakes. Be that as it may, this seemed like a good opportunity to delve into why I have a premium membership and support Play Diplomacy with my dollars, and why I encourage others to support this site in the face of huge quantities of legitimately stiff competition. First, a personal note. Besides playing a game or two of diplomacy with my friends in high school, play diplomacy is really where my diplomacy hobby originates. I haven't been playing the game for a terribly long time, and they're the ones who got me hooked. I played my first game there back when I was a college student, and I found it addictive. I've been chasing that high ever since. The next thing is my perception of Play Diplomacy's quality as a website. I think it's easily the most aesthetically pleasing diplomacy website. Compare it with Backstabber, which has the look of a blog that hasn't been fully fleshed out yet, while Web Diplomacy just looks bland. In terms of the aesthetics of the map, Backstabber is a lot better than it is as a website, but I still think it's kind of plain. And the Web Diplomacy map is actively offensive to my eyes. By contrast, I think the Play Diplomacy map is quite elegant. The territories each have shades of color, there are watermarks in the map, the images are gorgeous, the map is almost a work of art, as if someone painted a diplomacy map as opposed to just using Microsoft Paint to make a diplomacy map. Speaking of maps, let's talk about variants. Setting aesthetics aside, Play Diplomacy has a forum full of variants, and the site itself has multiple variants that it supports players enjoying whenever they want. There's the famously beloved Versailles variant, the War in the Americas variant, the 1900 variant, the Ancient Mediterranean variant, and the 100 variant, which I haven't put on here before, which simulates the Hundred Years' War, among others. And they occasionally roll new ones out. The only side I'm familiar with that has more variants is V Diplomacy, which is otherwise just an exact clone of Web Diplomacy. I don't want to compare Play Diplomacy to other sites too much, so I'll just beat up on Backstabber for a bit. There are people who like Backstabber, and I can see why. I also use Backstabber. It's the easiest diplomacy site to use. The maps are extremely intuitive. You could enter your orders with just your fingertips on a touchscreen device with very little trouble. If I were introducing my grandfather to diplomacy, I'd probably set him up with a Backstabber account. On the other hand, Backstabber is basic. Play Diplomacy has great variant maps, it saves records of every game you've ever played, it has an interface I like, although I acknowledge a lot of people do not and therefore do not use it. I think the site and the map are both pretty, and most importantly, and the biggest difference between it and Backstabber, its forum is a great repository of knowledge. The forum is really like a diplomacy library. The forum is what I've tried to make of this channel. It has stories about people's past games, posts and debates about strategy, and people volunteering to teach other people about the game. That last one is one of the definitive positives about Play Diplomacy that makes it special. There are mentor games where experienced players teach beginner players the basics of the game, as well as settings so that teachers can set their students up in games. This leads into the biggest positive about Play Diplomacy in my opinion. Play Diplomacy is a community. It's not just a stinking website, it's a home. When I played at the World Diplomacy Championships in 2018, one of the most exciting things was that I met people from Play Diplomacy in person there for the first time. Conk and Gun and Cinebi and Nanook, among others. A couple of these people have been featured on my channel. There are other people on Play Diplomacy like Poodle, who congratulated me on my wedding. There are people I've played multiple times, multiple games with, and had out-of-game conversations with. 
And there are people with whom I've debated about the true meaning of diplomacy and how it may or may not relate to our real-life morality. I'm looking at you, PJ Slim. Compared to that, Backstabber has all the sense of community of Craigslist. There's no messaging, there's no friendships, there's just anonymous, casual gaming. And keeping things casual is fine and all, but sometimes you want something more meaningful. Play Diplomacy caters to both. For the price of $25 a year, you can play unlimited, simultaneous games of Diplomacy, play live games, and play variant maps. It's roughly the same price I pay for access to Shonen Jump, to their catalog of titles. And they are each a great value, in my opinion. Sure, I know plenty of places where I could read those manga titles for free, and in particular, I know that Hunter x Hunter chapters always find their way to the illegitimate websites before they get officially translated and end up on the main Shonen Jump page. But as long as Shonen Jump is willing to give me access to them with my subscription, I have no reason to put up with janky translations and pop-up ads. And also, no reason to take money out of the hands of the creator and their publisher and put it in the hands of some sketchy person who is willing to steal someone else's creation so he could get a bit of ad revenue. The idea kind of makes me feel a little sick. Maybe I'm developing some moral scruples that I didn't have as a younger guy. Anyhow, I digress, but that digression had a point, I swear. And that point is that I think supporting play diplomacy is a good thing to do, for both yourself and the diplomacy community, which we want to grow. Play Diplomacy is one of the few places on the internet that is actively trying to grow new diplomacy players. Heck, it's almost as good as supporting Florida Man Diplomacy. I hope you liked this slightly unorthodox, outside the usual format video, especially because it's just an extra that I wanted to make because of the recent attack on Play Diplomacy, a cause sort of close to my heart. And it won't displace a regular video from my rotation. If you liked it, you should drop a comment below about your favorite diplomacy site or app or whatever and why you like it. You should also leave a like, because that way I know this content is wanted and desired. Now is the time in the video when I thank our sponsors, the Patreon supporters and translators who help make this channel possible. We have a couple of new patrons now in case you hadn't noticed. And just like the Play Diplomacy Premium subscribers, the people who subscribe to my Patreon get a little something extra for paying as little as a dollar a month. Access to a diplomacy podcast that goes through a full diplomacy game as the game proceeds, early access to my YouTube diplomacy videos, and occasional exclusive videos and posts. So consider joining. I hope you may also consider joining me on Play Diplomacy, where I am, as you'd expect, Florida Man. Till next time, Florida Man, out.